Hello, and thank you for joining me for Samuel in Springtime. Today is Friday, May 7th, and although I'm feeling a little under the weather, this is a daily video, and I can't um, take a day off from it. Um, but we're going to do our best because the story is very important. <clears throat> so, in chapter 7 of the book of First Samuel, we have the Ark of the Covenant, the AOC is what I'm calling it, and it stays in Kiriath-Jerim for more than 20 years. Eleazar is consecrated to look after the ark. And what happens in that point, at that point is that Samuel is still, he's still the judge and the prophet and the person um, to organize the people of Israel. And he, he finds it, he finds himself in a place where he needs to emphasize that they put down their idols, um, namely the idols of other tribes that they have come in contact with. They have adopted their idols, like the the god Baal. Remember him? You know, we'll read about him in the Book of Kings someday. Uh, but he, they adopt these other idols, and he has to compel them to return to the Lord. And so this is a common thing that you see the prophets preaching about and t teaching about and the judges as well to return the people to belief in the one true God and Yahweh and Elohim in um, the God of the children of Israel. So he's trying to return them to God. And, and the way we can look at this passage for us today is that some things that we put in front of God, we create as idols. And those things could be Netflix, cable news, gambling, um, all the idolatry that we set before God, substances, anything like that, that we put in front of God and keep us from focusing on what God has for us or the creation or anything else involved um, with our blessings from God and not recognizing those because we're in this other idolatry. So this thing, I think we should, we could learn from that. So Samuel in his intercession with God on behalf of Israel, he's this military leader and he knew what to do so he decides to create a ritual and he gathers them all at mitzpah. He gathers them together um, so that they, and they drew water, poured it out before the Lord and they fasted that day and they lamented against their sin. They, they repented basically. And uh, Samuel judged the people that were gathered at mitzpah. Now, while they're gathered there to really have this you know, tent revival and come back to God, the Philistines learn that they're all gathered in one place there. So what happens is uh, <clears throat> the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the people of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the people said to Samuel, do not cease to cry out to the Lord for us on our behalf and pray that God might save us from the hand of the Philistines. So Samuel does a ritual sacrifice on their behalf because they haven't gone back to their idols. They have asked him to intercede on their behalf with God. So because of their faith, he offers the burnt offering. As Samuel was offering the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to attack Israel. But the Lord thundered with a mighty voice that day against the Philistines and threw them into confusion. And they were routed before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mitzvah and pursued the Philistines and struck them down. And so, you know, this is, this is a st story to emphasize putting your faith and trust in God and setting the idols aside. They, uh, Israel was restored in the land and wealth and recovered territory from the Philistines. And there was peace with the Amorites as well. So Samuel went on an annual tour of all of Israel, uh, judging everyone that he came into contact with and basically just doing a good job of being the leader. Uh, going around to individual places because the communication was probably more limited than it is today. And he went from place to place to hear from the people, to teach the people, and to keep them in touch with their one true love, which is God. And so to return them to the fold. And so that's a very, very important thing. And even though the Ark of the Covenant is kept in this kind of far off place for all these years, 
Samuel is still this integral part of the community teaching and preaching and, and, and keeping them together. And that annual tour was really, really important. And I really feel like he was doing a good job as a leader by making that happen. And you know, so Samuel emerges in this chapter, especially as not just a judge, not just a prophet, but also a military leader. And we, we see how he is leading the people and being very involved in their lives. And so I think it's a good, a good thing. But the lesson here is what, what he's trying to bring to them is this idea of giving up your idols, giving up idolatry. And so this is the first commandment, right? You shall have another gods before me. And we've already got the commandments. Those are the things that are in the ark. And it, so we have this jealous God, right? And we think of it as God being just this jealous God. And this is just the rule. This is the way it is. But in reality, it is a very, very good thing for us to have God, some call higher power, in charge of our lives to keep us from this kind of idolatry we slip into. Um, God is God is giving us this commandment, which really looks out for us. It's not because God is necessarily jealous, but God would like us to put faith in something that cannot be shaken, namely God, God's self, and the Creator, and so that it ties us back into um, our love relationships, back into nature, back into the goodness of what life and existence is when we give up uh, our prone to worship our idols. And we all know what they are. They're different for everyone. But sometimes we have trouble giving up our idols. And uh, Samuel would have us, that word for us in chapter 8 is, or chapter 7, <laughs> is um, that we need to give up those idols. And, and it's really more of a blessing for us. It's, it's more about how we can live this fuller, richer life in the realm of God and, and, and paying attention to the things of God and putting our trust in a higher power. So may you hear that blessing today and may you experience an ex a day with God. God bless you.